Now, Rune Master. Oh my goodness. It's hard to express just how offbeat and complex and complicated Rune Master can be, but I tried to make a Rune Master build as simple as possible, and I think I did it. So, this build consists of fire damage over time. Now, I wanted to make as simple of a Rune Master build as possible because I love the essence of the class, but I just don't like a complicated playstyle in an ARPG. So what we do with this build, once we're at three fire runes, we just press Q and then W and then E and then R and then right click a couple times and then Q, W, E, R. Right click a couple times, Q, W, E, R. That's like, that's the build. It's just a piano, just Q, W, E, R, just left to right on your skill bar. And I'll show you kind of how it works here. And then we'll go over the intricate parts of it that make it possible to be as strong as it is while just being as straightforward as possible. So, so while we're running through echoes, I like to personally just uh, run through with frost wall, but turned into fire. And now we do Q, W, E, and then just right click a few times, move on, you know what I mean? Just run through the map just like this. And because we get some buffs by running through Frost Wall with a few of its uh, skill nodes, we're able to pretty reliably sustain buffs and tankiness while going through the entirety of the map. So whenever we see a unit that we absolutely want to kill, we just want to make sure that we're at three fire runes really quickly and then Q, W, E, and then R away. And as you can see, that profane flesh actually died in like the first few seconds of the damage over time combo. So we do that, we do this, and then we can watch their health melt. It goes down really quickly. Boop. Yeah, if you saw there, he only had 36 stacks of Ignite on him, and yet he was dying super fast. Anyways, this is not an empowered timeline or anything like that, but I think the essence of the build is really cool. So here, let's go over it really quickly. Our biggest damage is Glyph of Dominion. Now, it does a ton of damage on its own because it's a damage over time skill. However, we swap the Lightning Tag for a Fire Tag and convert the damage to Fire and Shock Chance to Ignite Chance. And then we make it ignite six times in one second. And then that six times in one second, the frequency is multiplied by our ignite chance per 1%. So when we have 100% ignite chance, we're gonna be doing 12 ignites a second and so on and so forth. And it scales up linearly just like that. This makes all damage over time dealt by Glyph of Dominion, ailments included, do more damage. This makes just Glyph of Dominion deal more damage over time, not the ailments portion. This makes us do more damage over time per armor shred, so it lets us get a little bit of armor shred. This makes the Glyph last longer. This makes the Glyph do more damage per rune that we have currently ready to be invoked. And this consumes the runes instead of runic invocation. Now, this is why we have our skill setup exactly as it is. So. This consumes the runes, so it's difficult to make a lot more runes just like in the middle of battle. It's pretty odd. But what the previous node does is put Glyph of Dominion on a 20 second cooldown and you have to cast Runic Invocation in order to reset that cooldown. So that's why we have QWER just like this is we consume all the runes and then we cast Runic Invocation without runes and if we hover over this it actually just gives us ward 80 plus one intelligence. So it gives us a nice chunk of ward right there, gives us a 107 right now. And then this comes off cooldown again immediately, as soon as, soon as we cast it. And then we cast Frost Wall because it's buffed up by a couple of the buffs in the Runic Invocation skill tree, and we'll get to that too. But you see how large the rune is uh, when, we have, when we cast it with three runes, but if we just cast it flat off, it's pretty small. It's, I mean, it's still large, but it's still is pretty small. Now, what this does is it increases the damage of Glyph of Dominion. It does more damage in a larger area. Now that more damage multiplies the damage that your ignites do and what the damage over time of Glyph of Dominion does. So that's our cue. That's the first part of our combo. The second part of our combo is Runic Invocation. Now, we're not using this with any runes, so we're just invoking nothing. So we just want things that vibe alongside that. So I pick this up, which gives us eight flat spell damage and 8% cast speed. 
And if you put three points in this, it's generally up the whole time. I'm still getting levels, but we want uh, increased mana regen per raw ruin. And this just provides passive effects while you have them and you're not consuming them, which is a decent portion of the time. This doesn't do anything, but you need two to get into this area, which gives us increased cast speed for runic invocation and current mana gained as ward. So in total runic invocation without any ruins right now with 132 mana is giving us around 150 ward. It's pretty nice and it's pretty quick too and it's giving us buffs now we also get 20 percent elemental penetration and 40 percent area on the next area scale that we use which is frost wall turned into fire so this is 40 percent larger and everything that has to do with the entirety of the frost wall tree penetrates 20 percent more elemental resistance meaning it does 20 percent multiplicatively more damage also with its fire damage over time and its ignite stacks and everything with that. And then here, because we're consuming our runes with Glyph of Dominion, we have an 18% chance to cast the three fire rune skill, which is Aragon's Greater Fireball, which gives us a spreading flames debuff, which is a unique uh, kind of ignite fire damage over time ailment, similar to ignite, but you can only have one stack of them at, at a time, but it helps out with the AOE a lot. So that's gonna look like this. So here we'll cast and you see there, the Glyph of Dominion went off and the Aragon's Greater Fireball went off both at the same time. Does a lot of damage. Next up, let's look at the Frost Wall skill tree. Now, this, we're gonna turn it into fire and we're gonna make it put the brand of trespass on enemies that try to pass through it. And this is similar to spreading flames, but it does a flat amount of fire damage over three seconds, but that damage deals more damage multiplicatively for each percent ignite chance we get. So our frost wall scales off of ignite chance and our glyph of dominion scales off of ignite chance. And that makes us also want to stack ignite, which means everything else we do like rune bolts is going to make us do more ignites and more and more and more and it's kind of it's like a multiplicative ignite stacking effect now what we also do here is get one point here because this node changes frostbite chance to fire shred so one point there is going to get you around eight or nine stacks of consistent fire shred and we make it last longer do more area and we also and we also do more damage to chilled enemies while we have an active frost wall this affects damage over time and ailments as well so we get chill on our gear it's no big deal and we can apply chill with our rune bolts and anything else that hits we also take this because this counts as a hit which can apply more ignites and then we want more frenzy and haste duration to speed us up and smooth out the play style. Then we get a little bit of sustain from it as well because we like to cast it in front of us and then walk through it. And then we also get some cleansing negative ailments right there when we pass through it. Frost Wall does pretty much everything. It also casts Rune Bolt every so often. It doesn't cast it that often. We can look here. Underwhelming, right? Now what's funny about Frost Wall is that if you put yourself on top of a Glyph of Dominion, the buffs from Glyph of Dominion synergies in the Rune Bolt tree actually make the Frost Wall cast more Rune Bolts as well. And now we're moving on to this. Now this is what's activated on the Frost Wall casting Rune Bolts when your character is standing on the Glyph of Dominion very interesting mechanic here we take auto target because it's just really good especially when it's being casted from the frost wall as well and then everything else to get more projectiles so we cover more area here we get haste and cast speed we only want fire rune bolts because if we cast any other kind of rune bolt we're not going to have three raw runes to stack up as much area and damage for ignites from the glyph of dominion so because if we look here, detonations do does essentially nothing and frostbite stacks do essentially nothing because we are looking for ignite because we're scaling damage over time and fire damage over time very specifically. Now Runebolt actually has some really interesting synergies here so we can get some more mana sustain, but we get the rune weave stacks. Now this is gonna make us sustain our mana pool more and it's also gonna make us sustain our health pool more because we're getting 120% of our mana spent gained as ward per stack. And Glypho Dominion actually costs 27, Runic Invocation with no runes costs nine, and Frostwall costs 32. 
and Flame Rush costs 15, so we're actually using basically our full mana pool worth of mana per go around, which gives us around 200 ward or so, uh, as long as we have three rune weave stacks up. We get multiplicative elemental damage increase, so that affects ignites as well, per rune weave stack, per stack of armor shred. So it all comes together, right? It all comes full circle. And there also happens to be an armor shred chance right here. So it all comes full circle. So we're casting armor shred and getting rune weave stacks. And then Frostwall is also casting rune bolt to do armor shred. It doesn't stack rune weave stacks though, so that the glyph of dominion makes us also do more damage over time. You see, it all comes together. It all comes together. Now, lastly, we get flame rush. We make it go further faster. And we basically take all the defensiveness and the buff persisting and the mana efficiency nodes and the cooldown recovery nodes so that we can use it more often. And we also take Ember Wake here because this is what it does. It shoots out those little things. And when you have those little things going through a lot of enemies, and hitting a lot of enemies and each one counts as a hit that can end up being a lot of ignites just for free just for you just moving along just like normal now if you're wondering if you can do volcanic orb with this setup you absolutely can it just costs too much mana good luck if you can sustain the mana instead of those ember nodes you can definitely do volcanic orb or you can do both i'm really not sure and this is the weirdest thing with this build specifically because i wanted to make an ignite like centric setup this is how many points we actually put into the rune master tree for now in the late game we would get six points here for the most bonus damage from crits minus certain percent but other than this node right here everything over here doesn't really affect a pure fire build that's why we come over here we get the max arcane momentum we get the move speed spell damage helps but it's mostly just the move speed and then we get the ignite chance and fire damage and then we get the fire penetration and fire damage leech both of these apply to ignites again our ignites are going to deal 15 percent more damage and we're going to be leeching 1.5 percent of the damage enough to sustain you throughout the entirety of the game it's wild i'm just going to focus on getting more damage in the spellblade tree with this and i'm thinking maybe fire auras and then i would just end up getting more tank in the base mage tree as well is probably the best thing to do. So really quick, let's just check out the boss DPS on this bad boy and then we can get up on out of here. So QWE, just right click a little. You can see he ticks down for like 5% of his health sometimes. QWE. And we just go through QWE. It's disgusting. QWE. And if you really want to min max it, you can cast Aragon's Firebolt like normal as well. So after you do the initial combo, you can do three times and then cast it and then go through your normal combo as well. And you can see just how fast our cast speed actually goes up. It's kind of disgusting. It's a beautiful. I mean, it, it's just a lot of stuff going on, but it's all just beautiful fire damage. Gorgeous. I love, I love this build so much. It is so much fun to play. You're kind of just, uh, you're, you're kind of just a monster. You're kind of just like the incarnation of Raye. And it's, it's amazing because all you do, all you do is for Raye. It's fucking no anyways i hope you enjoyed this rune master showcase there's so many more things that you could do with this class this is really just scratching the surface good luck